Greetings in the name of the Lord. This is Jim coming to you from John 424 Radio and NoPews.blogspot.com. Once again, we are happy to be with you. Hope you're having a wonderful day in the Lord. And I would like to bring to you this lesson on revival, question mark, or a great falling away. Revival or a great falling away. Okay. Now, many false teachers are preaching revival and drawing a million peoples through unbiblical and quite often blasphemous teachings. They're teaching that there's going to be a great revival coming, but we would challenge in this teaching, in this lesson, is that true? Okay. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, warns about many false teachers multiplying in the last days. You can read about that in Matthew 24. Okay. I think it's four or five times more than anything else. Else he warns against false teachers. Okay, doesn't sound like an atmosphere for revival, does it? Now, God, does God's word truly teach us to look for a revival, or does it teach us to look for a great falling away? Okay. Now, an important note here is the word revival. The fact is, you will not find that concept or word anywhere in the New Testament teachings. Okay, it was really. Um, something that came along as a later spiritual invention of man's re religious modern system in the 17th and 18th century with men like Wesley who began to believe people needed to have an emotional experience to have a revival that's not found in God's Word anywhere, okay? So we would reject. When you see people talking about having a revival, we're having tent meeting, revival meeting, be very suspect because that's not found in God's Word. The biblical Gospels proclaimed people repent are born again, are baptized, and begin to follow Christ in obedience, okay? I don't know what they're reviving from, but it's not really part of God's New Testament teaching, so we need to test it as Bereans and see that it doesn't match up to God's Word, okay? Let's read a couple of sections of Scripture here. First one is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by your gathering unto him, that ye not soon be shaken in mind, or troubled, neither by spirit, nor word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away, and the man of sin be revealed, and the son of perdition. So what, what that verse is telling us there, the Apostle Paul is sharing with us that there is going to be a falling away. Let no one deceive you. There's going to be a falling away, okay? And other parts of the Bible talk about a falling away from the faith. And then he says that man of sin. He's talking about the Antichrist, the son of perdition, will be revealed. So Paul's not talking about a revival, okay? Paul's talking about... He's talking about that falling away that we believe and we know that the Bible teaches about in the last days, okay? Here's a section of scripture from Matthew 24, verses 10 through 12. Then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many, and because lawless will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Again, doesn't sound like a revival happening on earth. It sounds like a, a atmosphere ripe for false teaching, many false converts, much deception, no love. Remember, the greatest is love. Jesus said, you'll know my people by their love for each other. Here we see love falling away to the side. People become lawless, not holy, but lawless, okay, going against the law. Now, in that verse there, the word used offended, this is a Greek word. Word, okay, and the Greek word is a skandelizo, all right, and it basically means to entrap, to trip up, or apostasy, okay, to offend. So it gives us a hint right there that that's what's going to be happening in the last days, okay, and again, it does not talk about a revival. Many people teach we have to save America and we have to bring this great spiritual revival. It's not found in God's word. We're to proclaim the gospel, to proclaim Christ's death till he comes. Okay, But revival, not so much. It's a man's invention. Okay, Next section of scripture, 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Again, it's talking about a falling away of people and many deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, 
um, hypocrisy and their own conscience is sheared. We see a lot of that happening today. We see a lot of false teaching. In fact, the last 150 years, they say, more false teachers have risen up. Maybe it's because of communications in the media, computers, phones, radio, TV, being used to pro proclaim their false teachings. But we're seeing much of that happening today again doesn't sound like a revival it sounds like a falling away okay and think about this the Bible teaches the earth is going to enter a dark dark period of great tribulation before the Antichrist rises up and Christ returns to take back the earth that he created okay doesn't sound like things are going to get better does it it sounds like they're going to get a lot worse first until Christ comes back and that's the point that we're trying to raise here okay Okay, moving on to the next area of Scripture, 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn away their ears from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Okay, right here I can tell you, this sounds like it's talking about the denominational system of man's teachings in this country and around the world today. They're following false doctrine. They don't endure, endure sound doctrine. Their own desires, the seeker-sensitive ways we see and be taught everywhere, filling the pews up with people for seeker-sensitive ways and programs and fun events and uh, modern hip music and things that feed people's flesh but don't call them to faith and repentance to kill their flesh in biblical truth they have itchy ears yeah that means they they're hearing what they want to hear pastors modern pastors are telling them what they want to hear so they'll keep coming back to the pews right and it says right there they will keep up for themselves teachers that means when you have a body of believers whatever they whoever they hire as their teacher and whoever they allow that's what they want to hear, okay? There's an old saying, a nation elects the leader it deserves. Whoever votes for this, this man in majority, they get who they deserve, don't they? That's kind of what's happening in your denominational religious places today that have left God's word. They're keeping up, um, they have itchy ears and they've heaped up these false teachers and they've turned away from the truth and they're following fables. If you go to our nopews.blogspot, click on the Spirit and Truth blog, you can read all about the many fables of the denominational system, the many unbiblical errors that they're teaching today that we stand against and we drive this home because they are a driving force in people's spiritual life and we stand against them today. Okay, moving on. Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. Nevertheless, I say this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do your first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now, this is Christ talking to one of the churches. Now, keep in mind, he's telling them, unless you repent and get back to your first love, your lampstand will be removed. Okay, maybe not... None, maybe none of us know exactly what remove your lampstand means fully, but I can guarantee you this, it's not a good thing. It's a rebuke from the Lord. So he's telling them to repent and get back to their first love. This is also a falling away. We see that falling away happening once again, okay? Next verse is Luke 18.8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? Wow. Now that statement says a lot. When, by the time Jesus Christ returns for his second coming, the, the scriptures say, will there be any faith alive on earth? Again, this does not give us the seeds of a revival or the evidence of a revival. This shows us that evil will rise. The Bible says, good will become evil, evil will become good in the last days. And this shows us how dark it's going to get. And that's why we need to cling to God's word with all that we can so that we're not deceived or swept away. Okay? Now, as we've been saying, God's word does not show that any of these verses indicate any kind of revival. In fact, you can see by the verses, there's a great catastrophe that's headed this way. And the falling away is predicted, okay? It's called the Great Tribulation Time, when evil will rise up. Satan's going to take even more control of this earth than he has today via the Antichrist and a one-world system. You can read about that in Revelation 13, okay? Now, believers are warned, so we won't be deceived, okay? No one could see that, um, or one can see that as persecution comes. In the end times, people will have to make a decision, all right? If they're not standing on the solid foundation of Christ's word, Matthew 7, all right, they're most certainly going to fall away. We don't want that to happen to us, and we don't want that to happen to you, because we care about you, and we love you very much, and that's why we're standing 
uncompromising for God's truth, okay? Now, Jesus encourages his followers to cling to his word. He tells us in Matthew 23, verse 13, but he who endures to the end will be saved, okay? It's very important that we walk in his ways, we cling to his word, that we remain in his ways, okay? There's various warnings in the Bible about remaining, finishing. Paul says nobody gets the prize in the middle of the race. We get the prize at the end of the race. That means if your heart's still beating, your race isn't done yet, okay? So you need to keep striving. We are not saved yet. We will be saved and redeemed upon our death, okay? We need to make sure that we're striving in the word. This whole eternal security, you can go to no pews, not blocks by click on the discernment blog. Look up once saved, always saved. Look up eternal security on our posts. This is a lie from Satan, okay? Surely Christ can save us, and it's by his hand and his grace alone. But we are called to obedience and to follow him in holiness. So he who endures to the end will be saved, okay? So ask yourself, are you worshiping in spirit and truth? Okay, We'd ask you to go to our blog and check out the various information there that challenges and calls people to come to his spirit and truth worship. Okay, John 4.24, that's a foundational verse for us here. Okay, Check out our, our No Pews Not Blog Spot, the Discernment Blog, the Spirit and Truth Blog, the uh, Home Fellowship Blog. All those are there to help you walk in obedience to the truth, to learn about it, to hide his word in your heart, Okay, so that you can stay in his truth, remain to the end, and you can know when people tell you, ooh, we need to strive for a revival, you can know, well, some people will come to faith in Christ, okay? But Jesus said, narrow is the way, few will find it, okay? So we know not a lot of people are going to come. And when people start talking about a revival, you need to be able to stand strong and show them in the scriptures. No, the scriptures show a great falling away. And if we want to be um, known as his people and we want to hear good well done good and faithful servant upon our leaving this world and headed into eternity we need to make sure that we're standing on the word we're not practicing falsehoods we're not trying to practice revival we're, we're practicing biblical faith and obedience proclaiming the gospel go to our nopews.blog and see the gospel how to be redeemed the biblical gospel and that we're living out obedient holy lives for him okay so this has been Jim and Debbie from nopews.blogspot.com, John 424 Radio. We find it a joy to come to you and bring God's truth. If we can help you in any way, let us know. Email us at narrowroad8711 at hotmail.com. Give us a call, 608-547-8162. Don't be looking for this world to be revived. Preach the gospel. Live holy, obedient lives. Proclaim his death till he comes and find like-minded believers. We're here for you if you need us. That you can grow and walk in your spiritual life and glorify God. Thanks for listening till we come at you again, speaking more truth into your life. This is Jim, and we will talk to you soon. Take care and may God be praised.